Wasler scaling is a great app that is capable of doubling or even tripling the performance in any PC game using frame generation. I have used it once on this channel in the Cyberpunk 2077 lag fix video where I managed to win the game at 60 FPS on the Intel HD Graphics 630 with the help of it which was honestly one of the craziest things I've ever done. So after seeing that lossless scaling works on Intel HD Graphics 630 you might wonder if it works on even lower end hardware, and by that I mean much, much lower than that. Take my old Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop for example, which has the dual core Intel Celeron Entro 840, Intel HD Graphics Beige Rail, 4GB of RAM and a slow 5400RPM hard drive as the boot drive. Also a quick shout out to the quite a few people who suggested me to try out lossless scaling. Now. Most of the games which popular YouTubers used to test lossless scaling such as Elden Ring, Cyberpunk 2077, Horizon Forbidden West, Hogwarts Legacy, Alan Wake 2, etc. don't work on the potato PC because uh, first of all lack of API support and second because well what the hell do you expect from a, from a super low end Celeron with 4GB of RAM? So for this reason, in this video I'm mostly gonna be focusing on old games. So let's begin with the testing. Alright, so the first game that we will test is GTA 5, which I'm running using everything that I showed in the recent lag fix video. By the way, it takes like a whole day to install and apply everything. I'm using the absolute lowest settings by the way, you can see them right here and also in the advanced graphics everything is turned off except the frame scaling mode because I'm running the game at half of 1366x768. The texture quality is set to high to contain the memory leak problem that GTA 5 has and, uh, and the vSync is set to half because of the long loading times. Because if I disable the vSync, it takes like an eternity for the game to load for some reason. I flocked frame rate to 15 using MSI Afterburner because of the texture disappearing. Why am I in this uh, little bike by the way? What a nice, what a good car like. What is going on? I can... Ah, there we go. This is a nice car. I want it, please. So yeah, after doing like uh, who knows how many stuff. This is how the game runs. It's not too bad if you ignore the fact that it looks worse than GTA San Andreas at this point. But hey, if it's what it takes, then let it be. Although this isn't really an intensive error, so I, I'm not too sure if how accurate this is. It just spoiled me here when I loaded the game. Okay, now this is lossless scaling. I'm using the nearest neighbor uh, scaling type because it's the most lightweight one. These are the rest of my settings and let's first test it with, uh, with frame generation 1.1. So let's see how it runs. Ah. Oh my god. Why does it feel so choppy? It's running worse than before. And now the integrated GPU is the bottleneck and not the CPU like it is usually in this game with with this hardware oh my look at this this yeah it's absolutely atrocious it's running worse than before like how could that be possible what is going on Alright then, what about uh, frame generation 2.1? Let's try it with the uh, Motex 2 performance song. Well, now it's running even worse than before. What about. Uh, come on, PC. Don't be weird. Okay, finally, let's try it with, uh, with the X3 mode, which like triples the frame rate, at least when it's working properly. Well, we went from 11 FPS with lossless scaling 
to 9 FPS with lossless scaling 2.1 X2 and 6 FPS with lossless scaling 3 times. Great logic. I guess lossless scaling 1.1 is the best performing one. Not like it uh, works well anyway, but uh, yeah, it's, it is the best performing, despite being the oldest. Oh, and by the way, the game runs worse than before. So that wasn't a very good start. Yeah, I don't like this. Let's just uh, disable that stupid frame generation. Ah, there we go. See that? 20, 22 FPS. It is amazing, guys. It's actually smooth without the lossless scaling. Oh well. Let's move on. Sleeping Dogs, one of the best GTA clones, an absolutely underrated masterpiece. We're playing this at 640x400 using the lowest settings. This is the original version and not the definitive one, which still are more demanding. By the way, that police is super loud. Holy crap! As I'm saying, this is the original version of the game and not the definitive one, which is even more demanding. And it's good that we're using the original version because, well, it's already when you got 15 FPS only. Let's see how it runs with lossless scaling. Well, it's now running at slow motion for some reason. I mean, it is 22 FPS, but it's running at slow motion and the camera feels super weird. There is some improvement with the FPS, but I don't think I would play like that, guys. Like, it is running at literal slow motion and the camera is super weird and laggy. Just look how bubbly it looks. Yeah, this is horrible. Okay, let's stop it there. Let's. We turn back to the normal, to the normal without the frame scaling. I mean, it already was kind of like crap, even without the frame generation, but uh, yeah, just don't do it. Don't use lossless scaling because, well, it's gonna be even worse. Well, there wasn't really a benefit in this game, but hey, we will test some other games, so yeah, there is still hopes for lossless scaling on this PC, so let's move on. Wow, that was a nice jump. Assassin's Creed Rogue! A beautifully optimized game, unlike the other Assassin's Creed games, we're playing this with the lowest settings and the resolution of 800x600. Guys, just take a look at how beautifully optimized this game is. Even the oldest Assassin's Creed games, maybe except Assassin's Creed 1, don't run as well as this. All the other new Assassin's Creed games run like uh, absolute crap. Yet this one is running at 25 FPS. That's crazy. Okay, so now let's enable our wonderful lossless scaling to see if there's going to be anything positive. Wow, 284 FPS. Now it's to the... Ah, uh, why? Just why? Once again, yet another failure. Not only are the FPS not too different from before, but now it's running at slow motion once again. And with a lot of input latency. So yeah, once again, yet another failure. And just to for reference, show you guys what happens once again when I decide to use lossless scaling frame generation 2.1x3. it becomes even worse. If you have a really low-end uh, PC, I guess uh, you should use the, the older frame generation. Or you know what? I have an even better idea. Don't use this lossless scaling crap at all with such PC. Yeah, how about that? <sighs> lossless scaling, lossless scaling. Anyway, let's move on to the next game, I guess. And because Elden Ring won't work on this laptop, we're still gonna try Dark Souls 2! 
We're running this at the 800 by 600 resolution using the low settings. Guys, I do not understand why From Software wants to punish us low end gamers so badly. The other Dark Souls games run so much worse than this, yet this one is actually running surprisingly well. But at the same time, Dark Souls 2 is like the hardest one out of the Dark Souls games. It's like From Software wants to intentionally punish us low end gamers. Why? Okay, so now let's. Uh, Let's try some lossless scaling because we have to, even though I don't want to. And we're getting the same frame rate. But it's choppy as heck. This is a professional tip. If you want to make your Dark Souls 2 experience even more challenging on this PC, just use some lossless scaling. Take me later. Oh man, I just can't believe that there isn't a single game so far that actually benefits from lossless scaling on this PC. Like, you read all these requests asking me to test lossless scaling, you see all these videos showing lossless scaling how it doubles and triples the frame rate, so you decide to test it on this PC just for your audience, and you get this insane input latency and choppy camera. So yeah, Dark Souls 2. But it's even harder. Oh, let's move on. And now for something a little bit older with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the better version. We're playing this at the 640x480 resolution using the lowest settings with the exception of the texture quality which I increased high because there's what, like 1 FPS performance difference between low and high textures. I gotta say the performance is really impressive. I mean, I know this game is like super easy to run, but uh, it is still really impressive nonetheless. Look at that, 60 FPS, 66. It is amazing, isn't it? Oh yeah, I'm gonna die. Nice, so let's be a little bit more cautious. Let's try to not get ourselves secured. Let's see some explosion. Oh, oh I'm... I'm sorry, it was an accident, okay? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty good guys, not gonna lie. Alright, so now let's try it with uh, the lossless scaling, and uh, well, guess what? It's much worse once again. Not only is it much worse, but now it's much, much, much worse. It is super choppy and laggy, and the input latency is just crazy. You know what? Let's try to kill all these bad guys with the input lag and the and the choppy frame rate. Let's try to kill them. Let's see explosion once again. Another explosion. Beautiful fireworks. I can play like this. You know, it isn't all that troublesome playing like this. Let's be very careful not to kill a civilian. Get wrecked! And you too! Oh crap! Oh, we're dead. Half-Life 2, hopefully this one won't disappoint us. We're playing this at the 640x480 resolution using the low settings, with the exception of these two settings which keep reverting themselves to the highest for some reason every time I restart this game, but uh, it doesn't matter. The game looks better like that anyway. I'm using the new version of the game and not the 2004 version, but I don't care, I'm not going to be installing the old version just for some disastrous video. Let's go. And you know what guys, Half-Life 2 it's a great game, a legendary classic, it's a game that anyone should play, it runs on pretty much any modern computer, even this one, look at that, 62 FPS. 56 right there. Even in this de very demanding area, it's still running pretty well. 
And that's with the new version by the way of the game, as I said. And now it's time to absolutely destroy the performance! Yay! Worthless scaling they say. More like lose more scaling. So yeah guys, if you want to destroy the performance in, in your games on your, on your potato PC, just use lossless scaling. And you are in for a pretty epic experience. It is absolutely insane. I know I shouldn't have expected much considering what uh, we saw so far in the previous games, but come on man, this is a 2004 game from 20 years ago. And it's running worse with lossless scaling. How could that be possible? Once again, another disappointment. I expected much better, but uh, yeah, considering uh, how the previous games run when I tried lossless scaling, yeah, I think this was expected. And I know it won't get any better than that, but I decided to try Quake 3, a 25 year old game, using the 1024 by 768 resolution and the highest settings by the way, this is the first time that we're doing this. My god, look at that performance, 180 FPS. It is the first time that we're seeing triple digit FPS in this video, 200 FPS. That is crazy. And we just killed this bastard, but my health is now at 2. And we killed him once again. But oh my god, that performance is just crazy. I mean, I know this is a 25 year old game, but uh, still, it is crazy seeing 200 FPS on the Celeron. And um, I don't want to do this, but uh, just for the sake of you guys. Oh my god, 19 FPS in a. In a 1999 game. Holy moly. Overall, this experiment turned out to be an absolute, complete disaster. Not only did not a single game benefit from lost scaling on this PC, but in fact it actually made the games run much worse. From introducing slow motion to insane input latency and choppiness. This just did not turn out as expected guys. But if you have something more reasonable like for example Intel UHD 630 or a GT 1030, in this case losses scaling can be a really good tab for frame generation especially in older titles. But uh, yeah if you have a really slow PC like this one just avoid this program please. But hey you guys wanted to see losses scaling on this PC you got it. And now we know why we should use losses scaling on a really low end PC. So yeah, that's all for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it still despite uh, the horrible outcome. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.